So thanks for the introduction. My work is on temporal behavior models on, on for traffic diagnosis is joined work with Thomas Eiter from TU Vienna. And the motivation for this work is mainly we have still like, like traffic congestions are, large, are a large problem in big cities worldwide. And there were the economic quality estimates that um, just the US economy in 2018 loses 87 billion just because of these traffic congestions. And there is obviously people have thought about and tried to solve this. And one way to, to kind of tackle this problem is microscopic, micro, microscopic traffic simulations. And they're used, they're like, like simulations of traffic and there is like specific tools and they have a kind of a idea of, 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 of simulating each vehicle individually. And we kind of worked on based on, or we just extended or worked on Microsoft, used these microscopic traffic simulations and um, defined an abstraction of it. This is called mesoscopic traffic flow model. And it's kind of here is an example on the, on the lower right. Here, here we see one of these models and it has a static and a dynamic component. It's an abstraction of time, the road network and vehicles. So we don't simulate each vehicle anymore. We simulate always like, like, like amounts or collections of vehicles. And this was used in, in previous work for in previous work for traffic light signal plane configuration and um, configuration itself was encoded as in ISP. Like, so we guess actually signal planes in this. And but so we, we turn out that the results are very nice, but but having like nice signal planes doesn't mean that we, we know the reason for a problem. So in the if you look at the picture up there on the upper right, we see that might be a bad signal plane causing this traffic jam, but it just might be the green vehicle as well, which causes the problem. So the next step is actually doing traffic diagnosis on, based on this, is on this flow model. And our initial start of this work is called our temporal behavior model. And the idea is to have a declarative language to, find, to de define faulty traffic patterns. And this temporal behavior model is, is like, the, like the node language or that it was introduced by Busson in 1979. And the idea of, of such a, so mainly they're made of two, two, compo of two, two components. It's temporal behavior formula and, and global integrity constraints. A temporal behavior formula is, is defined as a, a conjunction of explanation, which are kind of like linked by this explain keyword to a conjunction observations under a, 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 like again a conjunction of, of temporal constraints. And this constraint language, they, they suggest there is like different way to, this, this depends on the time model as well. So they suggest, for example, to use Allen's interval algebra to do this, to actually evaluate these constraints. And here is, here I give one example. So we have, uh, so here the explanation, so what we wanna find is that we have no traffic flow at the same time when the traffic lights are green and we have a kind of a background knowledge that um, traffic light has to manage the same lane. And this will be explained on top of, 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 of observations, which are based on vehicle speed and the traffic light states. And here we see like the temporal relation for time points, time point one, the time one has to be contained or equal to time two. This could also be replaced for other like diagnosis, we could say like, for example, that the road works could be instead of traffic light grid. And the, so what we also need, so mainly that there is directly no connection between explanation and observation. So we need something to connect or to glue this together. So we need a set of background axioms, which can be defined as rules. And these, these are mainly, again, taken from the, from the traffic flow model. And the idea is, for example, using a rule that we have, if we have no traffic flow on one lane, and this is linked to another lane, which, is, which we have no information about, we can kind of derive that in the next step, there will be traffic, there will be no traffic there as well. And so the, the authors of the Hempel behavior models, Busson et al, they kind of gave or, or introduced us a way of, of how to interpret this, this formula or these models. And they suggested forward per, backward interpretation using first order semantics, but they didn't give so much of a hint how to, to do an evaluation on them. And obviously somebody could say, okay, let's just use the first order theorem prover and just get all and put it in, try to, to use the, the theorem prover. But we want to, to get more computation or more efficient, more computational support and still having a declarative language. So our idea is 
like more using or moving towards up abductive logic programming in ASP is B to express his temporal behavior models in combination with the background axioms. And here is like, here I give a quick outline what abductive logic program, how it is defined. It was introduced by Karkas in 1990 and it's um, a framework with like made of abduct a, like abducible predicates, a set of integrated constraints and a set of horn rules which they have to fill, fill certain conditions. So the, the framework itself is defined under generalized stable model semantics and I give just here on the right side, I give an example how this is defined. So first we have like a delta which is a, which is a subset of the grounding of, of the predicts of A and the, the, this delta, so there are different subsets of, of A they have to, they, we take the union with a, with a program. So in this case, with two rules, and then we can, can derive the stable model. Or so this they call it, it's actually called pre-generalized stable models. In this case, we have four pre-generalized stable models derived from, from the union of P and A. And now we take the integrity constraints. Here in this case, we have two integrity constraints. And by this, we can ru rule out um, model one and model four, so which is, uh, we have model two and model three left. And there's a next step, we have a query. The query Q is, is, is the conjunction of observations we have. And there's two like way how this, this can be entailed. So the query, so our models have to entail a, a query Q and this can be in either bravely or cautiously entailed. So in our case, we have a look at, at the bravely entailment. So we, we see that model three does not, does, not, does not entail our query. So we just end up with model two. And this framework by itself does not yet um, this framework does does not yet, does not does not give us any idea of time. So we inter we had the idea. So actually, we had a look at temporal data log by Komitsky and I. And the idea is uh, so that the main notion of, of of temporal data log is that that we the intro so the authors introduce temporal terms, which are like 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 embedded or embedded nested unary functions. And they define an infinite least terrible model semantic with the least fit point characterizations. So to so they also defined in the semantics the the kind of restricted infinite least terrible model, and they said okay, there is possible to to have snapshots and segments of snapshots and also like periodicity in models. Periodicity is the main the basic idea to have um, the non-temporal projection of a model in this period does not change. And these syntax restrictions allow us adaptability for query answering. So our idea, and this is just work in progress, that we use actually this periodic least hybrid model as, as instead of the general stable model semantics. But this is just work in progress. So, so I'll, I'll like to present the second part. This is based on the idea that horn abduction. So, so we still we, we aim to, to encode this in ASP. So we have to, to allow this temporal LP framework to, to, to be evaluated in ASP. So there's, but two, there's two challenges on this. So one challenge is that is, so we have, there's no back chain link directly available and the evaluation of temporal constraints language is also not for free in ASP. So, so we need to find two, like we need to tackle these problems. So the first is, so this is based on, on the work of a colleague at TU Vienna and he is working on ASP based abductive reasoning first or horn logic. And this is his main goal is to, to be used in natural language processing. But um, so the idea is to find explanation by hypothesis computation using back chaining of axioms and factorizations. And this hypothesis computation, so hypothesis, so he defines a hypothesis as a conjunction of, of, of abduced ground atoms and equivalences, and it's constructed based starting with the query Q and then we, like back chaining is, is, is applied using forwarding chaining rules. And the, sec and the second part, like so there's actually two steps and there's a factorization. This means that finding direct the term equivalences in this. And he uses this notion of proof graphs in combination in this, in this step of, of, of computing a hypothesis. And the idea of a proof graph is the following that we have, so the proof graph gives us the way how do we in this back chaining step, how do we derive our obtuse, obtuse answer? So it's made of nodes, which are initially derived atoms. It's made and it has edges. 
feature either like in, in so in this proof graph for example we have the, the axioms so like the, the numbers the, the numbered edges are axioms or we have like the factorization so we find equality and the, so the encoding is 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 designed that one uh, generates all possible proof graphs deterministically and then we can guess different proof graphs with different paths which leads which leads to different sets of abuse ground atoms so we have different ways how we we, we apply the the, the back chaining and this can be then also like this proof graph itself can be used to 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 apply preference functions for example applying costs to the path so and how can be this used for temple abduction so the main one the, minute okay thanks so temple abduction the main the main idea is that we we use the hypothesis generation by proof graphs again so we use the same mechanism but instead of factorizations we add temporal propagations and temporal prop propagations the so I quickly just explain the idea of it so we observations in our case have time values assigned. So in this case, the query Q has like, like it, like the, the ground atom Q has two time points and the atom Q has also two time points. And there's two cases in this back chain. In this back chain. So in, in a single atom, we just propagate the time value and in, in multiple atoms, we might have conflicts like here, the case of, of C, of C, like one and two. In this case, we have to assign, if there's no match, we have to assign, for example, either the max value, mean value, or an unknown value. And this is also based on, so the second part is that we need a time value assignment of a hypothesis. And this is based on a mapping of the temporal ground atoms to the, to the assigned temporal values. And then we create a Cartesian product of this to get the ground mappings, which then is derived in each hypothesis. And as a last part, so we'll just very, very quickly skip over this that so each hypothesis has to be evaluated against the temporal constraints and for this we, we work we use for example for point algebra we have qualitative constraint networks and in qualitative constraint networks we can find mappings to the variables which fulfill the constraints and now our hypothesis has to actually has to to be a mapping in this qualitative constraint network in this we have already like evaluated in point algebra and interval algebra and in interval algebra is a bit more challenging. We use different logic. And for this, we kind of designed a modeler encoding in the SP having three, three sub programs so we can change depending on the time model and the algebra we can change, exchange parts of this model. And here at the conclusion, so we, we kind of showed that encode, we can encode a temporal L LP framework in ASP, but it's work in early stage. If that is a process computation based on back chain and proof graph is, is, is really interesting. And we did already test with Klingo 5.3 on small examples in evaluation time, all stayed below one second. And obviously moving to LNC interval and heaven and intervals will be more challenging since we need a different semantics or data to can tell could be interesting or the propagation functions are needed and the process generation could be also like improved. And future work is like working on the semantics, more experiment, defining or working like out the computational complexity and optimization techniques. So thank you very much.